Hello YouTube, it's February the 1st and I am here to give an updated video on this channel. I know it's been a minute, but I am back employed with another call center. I am now a tech support agent for Kadoon and I am here to show y'all a step-by-step -step extensive process of how I got employed with this job over the course of six weeks. This was not um, as quick as some other call center jobs. Y'all know before then I was just with Teletech. And I literally got hired with them with like a week's time period. I applied and I was already working with them within like literally 10 days. I was working with them. This company, on the other hand, is five weeks. Um, difference in pay is, as you can tell from right here, for my benefits when I first applied, I applied on the 15th. I got a response on the 16th. And it was... $12 hour position for tech support for some reason I couldn't get into customer service that's where I really you know would have preferred but it is what it is I transferred later on so I applied on the 15th and then from the 15th um I had to do a call simulation so this call simulation is and then, as y'all can tell, I also applied for other gigs and stuff as well. I also applied for Kelly Connect during the same time period. But they did this virtual simulator where you mimic being in a call center and you're answering the calls and you're logging in the notes as well. They're also going to um, judge you on your personality type and all of that stuff. But this is all before the interview. This is the, the application process of getting hired. You're going to go through a virtual call simulation and you're going to answer a variety of questions. So scrolling on up. So right here, now we at 1220. And you know, for confidentiality reasons, I can't open up the emails. That's why I got my phone and I'm looking at it right here. So, so on 1220. Let's see. Workspace interview. Okay, here it goes right here. 1221. Okay. So next steps is, and then it got my, you know, job number and all that. That's why I can't answer, uh, can't open this email. So the next step in this application process is that we review your full application. Passing assessment does not guarantee the interview. And this was the time that I had to do the interview process. It is roughly two hours long. So make sure you have about two hours in your day to do that um, call simulation interview. And then it just gives a brief description of the job. It tells you about that your pay will increase to $13 after 90 days of consecutive employment. Full-time only, part-time is not available. Um, it tells you about your FSA and your HSA benefits. Yes, this job does come with both FSA and HSA benefits, 401k and paid time off. Now, the paid time off, I think, will come within a year of you working for the company. Um, you know, the, and that's standard for most jobs. Fun team oriented. Oh, my goodness. It, it, it's definitely been fun. My first week on the job is amazing, but that's a whole different review. I don't want to make this video too long so i'm just going to show y'all the hiring process in this video and then i will tell y'all about how this has been literally the best call center job that i've ever had in my entire life so after this one we're going to scroll up some more oh by the 27 i was denied for kelly connect it is what it is honey i received some more job opportunities from Conduent which it didn't matter at that point because it was like I was already um I was already in the process of being hired for one so we're going to scroll up to January the 2nd and then y'all see that's my builder all my payment failed because I switched credit cards last minute and then they repay me so as y'all can tell my builder all payment was successful on the 3rd but this is where we're going to right here so on the second, I was contacted by Miss Philomena. I can't tell y'all the names. I just can't go into the job numbers and revealing her email address. So then I 
had my appointment set. I had my appointment set for Monday at 3.30 Eastern time zone. Uh, 1719. And pretty much during this interview, they're going to question you on, on your empathy. Um, definitely highlight that about being empathetic towards the customer's plight. Another thing is I've never touched the iPhone or Mac software in my life, but I did want, not want them to know that because they want you to be well versed in technology overall. Um, including Apple software, um, Android software, Mac. They want you to be well-versed in technology overall. So I had to study up on a broad spectrum of questions um, regarding technology. So make sure you're well-versed. Now, legal reasons, I can't tell you who we are contracted for. But I will say, once you find out who you are contracted for, as far as a technology-based company, I will give y'all a hint. They do represent 50% of the market as far as people who own their um, portable devices. And that's all I can tell you. I can't even give y'all a hint of who this um, client is. But, yeah. But make sure you're educated on technology in general. Um, just basic troubleshooting skills. They will uh, educate you on everything else as far as remote servicing of devices, um, finding finding people's phones, and you know transferring and all of that. They will educate you on all that good stuff once you're hired. Just make sure you know how to turn a phone on, regardless of, of whether you're a team iPhone, team Android, or whatever have you. So that was that right there during that time frame. Had my interview. It went well. And this was the difference between when I applied for it this time versus last year. Last year, I had to go to a third interview with the hiring manager. And I told y'all I was late to logging in because the power went out. It was storming and everything. And then I had to reboot my sit. And then my lap, my, um, I think it was my laptop wasn't working. And then I had to switch to my phone and I had to download this app and we had to be in a class for two days before I even got put in with the hiring manager. So I spent two days afterwards. So this is the difference between getting hired this time versus last time. Now with this second job interview, um, I did not have to go through a hiring manager. I was automatically hired. Now, maybe it's because I went through tech support directly versus customer service. It might still be the same way, but I noticed with going through tech support, once I completed this um, interview, she was already setting me up. To, she booked my class, and it was I had to go through the next proper channels to get my equipment and stuff because there's still several other things that you have to do before you get signed off for your equipment. But yeah, that was the major difference was this time I did not have to go and attend a two night pre uh class at seven o'clock at night to get prepped for what the hiring manager may ask me. And then, you know, that was like an hour interview uh, when I was with the hiring manager and I had to deny the job because at the time they was offering split shift only where I would work from eight o'clock to twelve. I would be off from twelve to four and then I come back four to eight. I couldn't do that at the time. I could do it now, but now um, I have a straight shift. I, I work from 10 o'clock to 7, so I didn't even get a split shift offer. That might come up once I get on the clinic, on the floor. We'll, we'll see down the road, but right now, they already have my future sheet already printed out for me from when I get on the floor, and it doesn't have a split shift at all, but before we even get to all of that, I just wanted to point out those differences that the interview process will be different this go round it versus if you applied last year like i said i applied last year we had to do a two night you know virtual class of getting prepped just to darn gone face to the hiring manager for the third interview versus this time i talked with this woman for like 15 minutes and i was hired i mean she looked at my resume and everything and this was another thing Unlike the last time, they screen my job applications. Like they literally call my job and everything versus with the previous one. So I guess that's why they eliminated the third hiring process because 
now they actually um check your background job but they only check the most recent one so obviously y'all know i work for myself i'm a licensed medical institution so what i had them do was contact my you know human resources person and confirm that i am who i am um i can furnish my um license number you know my EIN if I had to my um, aesthetic license I am a licensed medical esthetician in the state of North Carolina and obviously I could be employed so basically they wanted to see whether or not I was employable if I had any bad incidents for my last job now the thing is I own my business I'm a you know I'm self-employed and you know they did not have to know my human resource officer was my cousin she she answered some calls for me before, so technically I wasn't lying. I, I gave her that position, so when they called, um, she put in a good word for me. So that's a little tidbit for y'all self-employed people out there who needs somebody to pick up the um the phone for you. And the, and then it didn't help that you know my business is called the Wine Aesthetic, so it's like, okay. You're calling on behalf of a former employee you call LaJuan. The business is called LaJuan Estates, and you're wondering if uh, she can get employed. I, I would assume so. This is her business. But, you know, of course, my cousin didn't say it like that, though. But, you know, basically, um, as long as you didn't, uh, you left on good terms with your previous job, or in this case, if you own your job, uh, appoints a human resource officer. I don't care if it's a family member. They don't got to know that. They ain't going to ask, like I said, they don't go too in depth. They just going to ask a few questions and that's it. They, they're not going to ask for your EIN number. They're not going to ask for you to send over some documents proving that you used to work there. They're not going to ask for none of those, you know, intense evasive questions. They're they just going to take you pretty much at face value. They're going to assume that you're not lying. Which in my case I wasn't. Um, you know, I just put twenty on ten about who my human resource officer was, you know, my PR relations. So let's scroll on up. So after that, I later on received confirmation that I was able to move forward. So this was giving me the steps that I would need to take to move on to the next step. It was showing me my schedule for the next three weeks, which was off because this one says from eight o'clock to five. No, my schedule was 10 to seven, but it was giving me a rough idea of what my uh, thing would be like for the next three weeks, including you know the orientation call to set up my equipment and all of that. So exiting out of that, so conduit background check authorization. So I had to submit to a conduit background check, and that was also on January the 7th. January the 9th, I got an electronic offer decision, and y'all are seeing all of this up and through here. This gave me pretty much confirmation that I was able to join the company, provided that I meet all the other circumstances, and then the tax documents, pretty much all the standard procedures. If y'all um done call center work before, this is all, you know, redundant to y'all. The only difference is I came up with this darn going um I nine form again, except this time, unlike my last job where I had to print the shit out. And that made it a pain because I had to go downtown. Who owns a printer nowadays? This was virtual. So I love this. This uh, Their software is more like DocuSign, but it's not DocuSign. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to fill out your information and then you're going to give um, whoever you appoint um, a key information. And I'll go over that in a whole nother video, but it's some very technology-based stuff. It's technically advanced where you write your information down, you give somebody an information key, they can't access it for three days. And then after three days from when you fill it out, um, whoever you appoint to be your I-9 verifier, they're going to look over your stuff and verify that, yes, this is, you know, LaJuan such and such and whatever your name is. 
And pretty much that is it from there. But anyways, like I said, um, just stay tuned for more videos about conduit in the next upcoming weeks from my um, how my job is with the first week, second week, midterms, and transitioning onto the clinic for all those videos will be a, will be up to come. I think I'll do like 10 videos in all on conduit and what to expect throughout the process of being with this company. Uh, right now, I do see myself being here for a decent time. I don't necessarily see myself being here five years from now, but definitely I plan on being here for at least a couple months. So that is it, y'all. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.